when I was, I told, I'm 66 years old, so I was a child of the 50s. When I was a small child, six, seven years old, in the 50s, my parents would have parties every Saturday night at their house. And in these parties, they'd have candy dishes full of candy all over. And everyone in those days smoked cigarettes. So there were cigarettes where you'd open up a thing and you could take a cigarette out and there was lighters and candy dishes, I remember. And the whole deal was, is I would used to get to meet the company, have one or two pieces of candy, say hello to the company and go to sleep. Well, I used to lay up on Monday night planning how I'm gonna get that candy. Planning, like I'm gonna rob a bank or something. The obsession, which is the disease, obsession, compulsion, self center the obsession was so intense, it's all I could think about is how I was gonna get that candy. And I planned on it. The company came, I got the candy, I took it all in the room, ate it all, got sick at two o'clock in the morning. Mommy, mommy, I'm sick. You know, and then what I realized as I'm writing all this out and remembering that, what I realized, that's addiction, man. There was no drugs in my body. I was seven years old. But the obsession and the compulsion, once I started, I couldn't stop. And the self-centered part, I didn't care who, you know, if they caught me or not, as long as I got what I wanted, you know? And what I got what I wanted and it got me sick, just like, so exactly the same feelings that I had with drugs. When I used to go to score drugs, same thing. So that's why I believe that um, I was an addict when I was born. I loved it, it felt good. It changed everything, it changed all my perspective on everything. I had confidence and I had, you know, I was good looking and I could do this and I could dance and without it, I couldn't. Went from the alcohol as a 12 year old drinking beer all, all the way up to, to heroin. Did a robbery when I was 18 years old, got arrested. And they gave me the choice to either go in the military or go to the penitentiary for 10 years. So my choice was I went in the military, joined the Marine Corps. The reason I joined the Marine Corps was because it was a two year enlistment instead of a four year enlistment. It, it escalated from there, you know, it was so cheap and everyone was on something, whether it was alcohol, heroin, they used to have different types of speed that you used to drink, but everyone was loaded. And it was the only way that I would have ever coped with that horrible place, because it was. So when I got out of the Marine Corps, I, f I was so angry and so messed up from post-traumatic stress that uh, the drugs that I took eased that. For a while, drugs were a symptom and that worked, you know. I decided to go to Haight-Ashbury and be a hippie because, like I said, it was 1968, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I met a woman who later became my wife, moved back to the Bay Area, and it continued again, the same progression of the disease. So me and this woman who became my wife moved to Phoenix, Arizona because my father um, had just moved here. As long as I'm in Phoenix, there's no drugs in Phoenix, right? I detox and go back out and do it again, over and over. New York, Los Angeles, Salt Lake City, Phoenix, five or six times Phoenix. Not, not, not like recovery, but just detoxes and getting well again and then go back again. And that continued um, till 1987 when I got clean. They had this new drug called Darvon N for detox and if you went there, they would give it to you. The only reason I went there was not to get clean, but to get that detox drug. This is 1972. The only thing that I remember from that meeting was somebody raising their hand saying they had 90 days clean. And I kept thinking, wow, how nobody could stay clean 90 days. If you use drugs like me, if you shot dope like I did and did the stuff that there is no way, that is not humanly possible. I really believe that the seed of recovery was planted in me that day in 1972. Now, I didn't go there to get clean. Anyways, Calvary had a meeting at uh, 3rd Avenue in Van Buren. And the only reason I went to that meeting, not seeking recovery, the guy that I was with had $50, was going to cop in the Windsor Hotel, was across the street, and that's where the connection was. Somebody in that meeting in 1983, 11 years ago, raised their hand and had 90 days clean. And I just like, why do I remember 90 days and not six months or three, you know, what? I have no idea, but I remember 90 and I said, wow, maybe this could work, you know? It was August 15th 
It was 118 degrees in Phoenix. I was dope sick and I went into a cop. I went into a shooting gallery and I was using. My life was completely unmanageable. I lost my wife, my kids, everything I owned, everything I had. I was desolate and knew that if I did, that I was going to die sooner or later. Okay. So I go into this uh, shooting gallery. I use it as I'm coming out. The police are ra raiding the place. They came and arrested me and said, oh, you think you got away because you don't have any drugs in, but I'm going to fix you. And I go, okay, and what are you going to do? So he took me into the house and there's a bunch of Mexican nationals, all handcuffed. And he told them in English and Spanish that I was the, con I was the snitch. And I said, you know, you just signed my death warrant. And what, the, what he said to me was, good, because that's where all you stinking junkies belong is dead. I changed. I said, you know what? If I don't stop, I'm going to die. But I got pushed into it again. Whether I was going to stop, I probably would have stopped, you know, right in that area or, di or died or going back to jail. And, uh, but this time what I kept remembering is 90 days. Went through that, got, went to a halfway house, lived in the halfway house six months, continued to go to meetings. Uh, there was used to be a noon meeting and back in the 80s somebody had five years clean it was a lot man That was big time nowadays. It's not but back then it was and I remember f I remember following him around and watching him because he was so much like me He would I would listen to his stories. And he would tell me about being in jail and being in the penitentiary I used to follow him in the bathroom because I really couldn't believe he was clean. And I remember him looking me in the eye one day that I followed him in the bathroom. He said, why do you keep following me in the bathroom, man? I said, because I don't believe you're, I think you're in here and used it. And he looked me dead in the eye. He goes, no, because I've been going to these 12-step meetings, this program of recovery, and I'm clean five years. And that's kind of when it just really clicked for me. And then I really got involved in staying clean. First of all, when you get clean and you get you get you can get employable and you get back into you know a productive member of society, you get your families back. But uh, the, the real gift that I've gotten from recovery is I'm okay with me. I started to learn how to love myself, and I'm okay in my own skin because when I told you about those early days, I always used drugs because I was never okay with who I was. Today I'm real okay with who I am, and the only way that I can, you know, what the reason why that's happened is because I found this loving God in my life this higher power. When I was in the halfway house for six months, I, for the first month, I never left there because I was so afraid if I leave, I'll go use. Then I really went into it. I got the pen and paint. I started following direction of a sponsor and I started doing all this stuff and my life changed like, like that. And I started getting confidence in myself and saying, see, you're not here just to be a junkie. You're a loving person. People, have, people like you, people have, they want to be around you. You're outgoing, you're fun, you know, and I am.